Hello. Hello, Mr. Goldfish. See that guy? I thought all my goldfish had died. But it looks like at least one survived. At least twice as big as he was last year. Welcome to the spring. It's the first time I've seen any sort of signs of life in this pond. I thought, I literally thought all my goldfish had died. It looks like one is, has made it. <laughs> Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I'm just out watering my uh, seedlings. Uh, I had a viewer ask me about, uh, make a comment uh, that seemed to imply that the way I'm doing this, starting seedlings under plastic domes and different kinds of microclimates, whether that's worth all the time and effort it takes relative to the time and effort it takes to do transplants inside. and. Uh, I mean, the short answer is that I've done both and I find this easier and it works for me. And if, if what you're doing works for you, do what works for you. Uh, I'm a fairly experienced gardener and I find this works a lot better for me. And there's, I've made plenty of arguments for why I think it's a better way to do it. Uh, but I just wanted to speak to the amount of time and energy it takes to uh, keep things watered. Um, of course, as you can see, it's, it's really not... Uh, very springy feeling outside. I mean, today it feels like spring because the sun's shining and it's a relatively warm day, but this week we had a snowstorm, the schools were shut down, I had to shovel the driveway, it's a bit of a pain. Um, and it certainly, I don't think much happened uh, in terms of uh, underneath these domes this week because we didn't get a lot of sun and it was overcast a lot and it was really cold, you know, below freezing a lot of the time. So, uh, you know, there's that. But uh, generally speaking, in terms of watering, uh, I come out and water the garden once a week if it needs it. I mean, a lot of these beds don't even need it. I find the domes tend to need watering once a week because there's a bit of air in there. Those, those flat squares that I have that are very close to the soil, they don't need, hardly need watering at all because any condensation hits the plastic and goes right back down. Um, so I have other, it's almost a closed system. I mean, they, they still might need it, but basically once a week, you come out in the garden, you have a look around, anything that needs watering, you water it. It takes about an hour. So uh, I don't find that to be too much of a big deal and of course um, one advantage of that is that I don't need to uh, buy soil I don't need to you know mess around with different sort of mixes of potting soil I don't need pots I don't have to deal with pots I don't have to make sure they're clean I don't have to worry about fungus on the soil I don't have to turn on lights and turn them off or, or set up some sort of system that does it automatically I don't have to pay for electricity the sun's doing everything right the sun provides a better kind of light than anything you could possibly set up inside so there's that you could, that, that means you're giving the plants what they actually need right there's there's no substitute for true sun Right? It's just better than anything you could possibly rig up indoors. And it's free, right? So the other advantage is that the plants are in the ground, they're in the actual soil, they're going to grow on the seeds from the very beginning, are adapting to those conditions. They're dealing with the, uh, the ranges and temperatures that occur naturally throughout the day. They don't have to adjust to that. You don't have to hard them off. There's just so many advantages, right? The roots aren't interrupted by being pulled out and moved and that sort of stuff. So that's why I do it. And, I mean, if you follow my gardening videos and my, my garden follow-ups and the, the garden tours, you can see that throughout the course of the growing season, it works really well for me, despite being challenged with uh, less than ideal growing conditions here. Um, but yeah, it takes about an hour a week. And you might ask, why am I using this? Why am I not using a hose or anything like that? Um, uh, it's, it's just still too cold to hook up a hose right now. The water will freeze inside the hose and, um, and smash the hose. So. Uh, that's why I'm using this thing. It's a bit of a pain to have to walk back and forth, but it probably takes an hour a week, maybe less. It doesn't take a lot of time, so it's not a big deal. And once it gets warm, I'll hook the hose up with that sort of stuff. I guess the other question people might ask is, <clears throat> why don't you have a drip irrigation system? And the short answer is, I don't need one. I've done plenty of videos showing that uh, my gardens don't really need to be watered throughout the summer, or it's very minimal, right? I don't spend a lot of time watering my garden. The heavy mulch system that I use retains water really well. I guess to that point, in all of these beds where I've got domes and stuff like that, right, there's still some kind of mulch. Even if it's just a strip of cardboard between the rows, that's a mulch. And all of that retains water and helps prevent e evaporation and that sort of stuff. So you don't need to water that much, as opposed to having them indoors underneath the heating pad with lights on top. You've got to water that all the time, right? And you've got to have a little fan to strengthen up the stems. And I find that all, all that stuff a pain. If you enjoy it, enjoy it. <laughs> I don't. And I find this works really, really well. 
So uh, I just thought I'd speak to that really briefly. I'm just out here, it's a beautiful day doing some watering and that thought came to mind so I thought I'd short a, shoot a short video speaking to that point. You know, do whatever works for you. But if, if, you've, if you've ever thought like, God, what a pain this is doing all this transplanting, um, try a little bit of planting under plastic or something like that. You can sow things earlier than, uh, than, than what's typically uh, uh, the case. And uh, the plants just get a huge advantage from being started in the soil they're going to stay in and getting that full sun and, and all the sort of conditions, especially if you've got good soil, right? This, if you've got good soil in your garden, it's better than any sort of potting soil you can buy, right? So, and it's free. <laughs> and it just gets better and better through the work of the organisms in the soil. So that's how I do it. All right, so I wasn't gonna make this a long video. I'm gonna try to keep it as short as I can, but I just thought I'd walk you through the different approaches I'm taking to getting things started early uh, this year. Now, remember, it's still April. Where I live, Zone 6A in Nova Scotia, Canada, and it's too early to start heat-loving things. Squash, uh, tomatoes, peppers, all that sort of stuff. If you're going to try to direct seed under plastic outdoors, that's a whole nother topic. That's not what I'm doing here. I'm direct seeding cold, hardy things that can take a frost, can take a cold night, can even take the soil freezing a bit. Tough stuff, okay? So, I got uh, parsnips still underneath here. I sowed these last fall. And uh, I just thought I'm going to walk through every single means I am using to create a microclimate uh, to get things germinated and growing uh, ahead of schedule in the absence of a transplanting operation in my house. Doing everything outside, everything direct seeded. And all you need, the most important thing, is sun. You need sun. If you, got, you don't have sun, it's not going to work. you got to have sun. Right? Your, your growing zone isn't as important as how much sun you get a day. And I'm marginal because I'm near the coast and we get a lot of fog and stuff like that. But we get sun. We get, we get just enough to make this work. So here i got parsnips I sowed last uh, November. I've, I've got another bed over here uh, where I sowed the parsnips just a few weeks ago. Uh, both approaches work equally well. I don't find sowing them in November uh, yields any better results, I guess. I don't know, I haven't done it enough times to do a really good experiment. I haven't really set up a proper experiment using the same variety. I haven't have done enough repetitions. Um, anyway, it certainly makes things easier because you haven't got a lot, as much to do in November. So, I've got a just a wooden frame with plastic on it. And I put a little thing in the, just a little flower pot in the center just to create a, a kind of a dome effect. Really simple, right? Anyway, these were sown last November, and I'm, I'm not going to zoom the camera, and you just have to take my word for it, but a few of them, it's around the middle of April right now, a few of them have, uh, it appears, uh, germinated as of this uh, this weekend. Last weekend I looked, I didn't see anything happening, but there are there are some examples of them germinating thus far. Anyway, so that, that's happening. Parsnips. Um, and it just hasn't been warm enough. If I just sown parsnips in the ground as soon as the soil can be worked, uh, they wouldn't have germinated because it's just not warm enough. Uh, the air, the soil's freezing at night, stuff like that, it just wouldn't happen. So these are well ahead of schedule, which means they'll be bigger in the fall when I harvest them. Let's look at another thing. So this is a plastic, just a wooden rectangle with, with uh, plastic put across. All right, here I've got a uh, plastic dome. This is a, about four feet wide by eight feet long. And this bed is uh, four feet by ten feet long, and I find these to be the piece de resistance in terms of uh, you, you get the uh, the effects of a cold frame, but the versatility, right? You can put them wherever you want. You just pick them up, pick them up, and move them, right? Put a little string to tie them down to keep them from blowing away. Very tough, very durable. I've got beets that I have growing uh, sown under here about three weeks ago. I can't remember the exact date. It was like the last week of April I sowed these beets and they're growing. And that was despite having a snowstorm this week. They're still doing fine and coming along just great. I water them once a week, doing great. Here I've just got a, a piece of an old uh, storm window that somebody threw away. And I've got it stretched, uh, and sort of nailed, not, not exactly nailed too, but I've got a video on how I made this thing. I just made a frame out of uh, two by eight, two by 10. And I've got it angled towards south. And there's arugula growing underneath that, underneath this. Let me see if I can zoom it in to show you how well it comes across on camera. But there's 
there's some green there you go see look there's some green in there <laughs> so that's that's uh germinated and without this uh little microclimate that wouldn't have germinated it's just too darn cold for that sort of thing to happen right now that's worked just fine that's to me that's a lot easier than starting them indoors and when they start getting of, of some sort of decent size i can take these and uh, thin them out and move them to other parts of the garden because I planted them a little bit too thick as you can see but that wasn't by mistake that was on purpose they can be thinned out and repositioned and the ones you move uh, just you know uh, are, are set back but that creates a sort of succession planting there uh, you know the ones the ones you don't move are ready earlier than the ones that you move and that works out fine that way you've got different waves of of, the, of that green available right so that's just using an old storm window nailed to some 2x8, two 2x10, by two by two, two by that sort of thing. Now here I've got another one of those plastic uh, rectangle things, like a window. But at the very end, I've just got a piece of plastic between two pieces of 1x3. I find these extremely versatile. Let me show you. So it's just like this, right? You can roll it up. Now you can make it any width you want. I find this a good size. Uh, I tend to space my rows about a wood, uh, hand width apart. So this is enough for about two rows of something. If you were going to just put two rows in a garden and you wanted to get them started early, you just put one of these over. It's got a really low profile. It warms the soil up really well. It doesn't tend to pick up wind. If you don't want it to, uh, to blow away, if the wind's an issue for you like it is for me, I just stick some, stick some rocks on it like that. It's got such a low profile, it won't pick up the wind. That's all you got to do. Here's a dome I made using wood instead of uh, the wire remesh that the other ones are made of. I just uh, thought I'd try that for the sake of um, proving the point. You don't need a truck. Uh, you know, these are all materials you can fit into a small car. I drive a Kia Forte, <laughs> tiny little compact car. And this is all stuff you can jam in in the trunk and, you know, the wood's up in the front seat with you. But anyway. You can build a domed frame without a pickup truck <laughs> if you want to. I don't know how long this will last, but this is year two for it. It seems to be doing fine. I haven't have to do any repairs or anything this year. So we'll see how it goes. This is a little thing I set up. These are just, again, those plastic rectangles, but I, I put, uh, as you can see there, there's pieces of wood across the top to hold it up. And I had a whole bunch of mulch. So actually the soil level is about uh, six to eight inches below the plastic. So in, a, in effect I've turned this uh, slightly raised bed into a temporary cold frame uh, with a bit of a sunken, I guess, it's sunken only in so far as there's, there's mulch. The mulch level I would say is about six inches high. Uh, so the soil level is six inches below the very top of the mulch. We have this little valley here you know things grow well in valleys <laughs> that's why like you know you always think about valleys are, are associated with excellent growing conditions so you just create a little tiny valley and then you put a little plastic over the top to create a sort of extra warm place and uh, I've got peas sown here and I think uh, uh, they'll uh, they'll be going very very soon if I can get a few more days of sunlight like this here I've got just about as low bar uh, an approach to uh, uh, creating a microclimate as you can imagine it's just a piece of plastic and thrown over the soil. I got some peas sown here and this the soil in this bed is it's not even thawed down it's barely thawed down an inch. It's like the top inch of the soil is thawed and the rest is frozen. I know it looks nice outside but everything was covered in snow just a couple days ago <laughs> so the uh, it's, it's frozen about an inch all the way down. Uh, so all I've done was uh, I loosened up some of the soil on the top I put some seeds down and I put this plastic over the top and watered it. And uh, I don't know, in about two weeks they should germinate. Right, it's against the fence here, so I can train the peas up the fence, that sort of thing, right? Just a piece of plastic, weighted it down with some sticks and some rocks and stuff like that. There's a stick here, uh, I'll show you. That's all I did. Just take an old stick and just roll it up. These are all things I have to do to keep stuff from blowing away. We just roll the stick up. Snuggle it down like that. Low enough profile that it won't pick up the wind. 
And if I, if we had a really windy night, I'd put a ro I'd put rocks over this just to hold it down. Pretty low tech. Got another one of those uh, two stick things over here. I just planted some radishes here today. Sure, they'll germinate with or without this plastic, but they'll do it a lot quicker with the plastic. That's right next to the, the arugula I showed you earlier. Put these radishes down uh, actually today earlier with my my daughter. We took them out of the. I saved my radish seeds, and I got really huge ra radishes one year, like the size of a small apple. And uh, every year I grow those and save the seeds because uh, they're tasty and they're relatively sweet for a radish. Um, I'm the only person in the house that likes radishes, so uh, <laughs> I only need to grow so many, so I grow a few dozen. And it's something I just eat when I'm out in the garden, uh, like a snack to ward off hunger. There's <laughs> nobody really uh, is a big fan of them in the house. Anyway, really simple, right? And finally, we have the uh, ever ubiquitous and very popular, and what I would say is the least versatile <laughs> thing. The cold frame, right? I've got cold frames in my garden. I got um, spinach growing in this one that I sowed last fall, which is actually growing. I got uh, I sowed some kale in this one. Uh, no, I sowed some lettuce in this one. Uh, I'll move that lettuce out around uh, mid to late May and sow some uh, probably tomatoes there or peppers. <clears throat> and this one here, I've got uh, kale in uh, that I just sowed a week, but very recently, a few days ago. And uh, what I don't like about the cold frame is that it's kind of kind of stuck where it is, right? The plastic domes I can move them and work them into my crop rotations, um, but the problem with the plastic domes is they're 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 very large, and I mean you know I've got a, I've got a forest behind my garden so I can just throw things in the woods basically when I'm not using them, but uh, if I was in a suburban area the the domes the hoop houses would be kind of useless, um, so. Uh, you know these are stationary and you still have to work a crop rotation into them somehow so at least one of these this year is not going to be a heat loving plant you know after I take the so like for instance let's say we do it with this one this is kale once the kale is a good size and I can move it to other beds once it's warm you know I've got a bit of good head start with my kale I'm gonna plant maybe I can't remember which one I'm gonna do this with I'm gonna plant beans just to give that soil a break and, and they have a little rotation. You would never normally grow beans in a cold frame because a cold frame is basically a greenhouse, a hothouse. So normally in these cold frames I like to grow eggplant, peppers, tomatoes, things that I have a really tough time growing here with our lack of um, sunny days sort of thing. But uh, you can't just keep, you know, those things are, are all in the same family so you can't just keep doing that. You're gonna, you know, uh, just inviting disaster upon yourself. So you have to give that soil a little break once in a while. So I'm working beans into the rotation, but I, I just don't like that. I, I really prefer um, I prefer the domes because you can move them around. Oh, I got some wind here, sorry. Um, you can move the domes around and just work them into your crop rotation and they're mobile. Uh, barring the domes, the plastic rectangles are handy. And just pieces of plastic too, right over here. I've got a piece of plastic I just threw on the ground to warm this. I want to plant peas here in about a week. The soil is still frozen last week. I haven't checked it this week and I don't have time to plant them today, but I want to plant peas here down the middle. And I just put a piece of plastic down with some, some trees and stuff holding it down. It's very versatile. It rolls up and it's very small and easy to put away. Uh, you know, a lot of things, that you, just, tough plants, they can handle the cold, but they really won't get uh, germinated unless you've got a certain amount of heat and that sort of thing. So you can put plastic over them and get them going. And once they're about an inch or two high, to take the plastic off and let them fend for themselves. And if uh, you've planted the right thing for your climate for that time of year, it should just just handle the cold and uh, and just wait for warmer days and be fine. But anyway, that's all the different. I think that's I think that's all of it. That's all the different approaches I'm using in, in my garden to create microclimates. Uh, plastic, there's another one right there, plastic between two pieces of wood, just a piece of plastic, plastic domes, uh, plastic basically like windows, homemade windows, or a rectangle with plastic stretched, a wooden rectangle with plastic stretched across it, a hoop house plastic dome made with wire remesh, um, and, uh, and the ever ubiquitous uh, 
far too popular for its actual utility. <laughs> Cold frame. I'm a little bit here, but I'm, I'm just trying to. I, that's where my thoughts are right now, and I thought I'd shoot a short video speaking to that. So I hope you found that interesting, and if you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.